Friday afternoon in Portland, Oregon, as day three of the Little League Softball World Series continues. You've got the Latin American region champions from Mexico City squaring off against the Central region champions from Polk City, Iowa. We're here at Alpen Rose Stadium. Welcome in Troy Clarity, Aaron Miller, and you. Thank you so much for being here with us. And Aaron, these two teams participating in their second game in this tournament. Mexico trying to stay in the win column. Iowa trying to get there. Well, for day one on Iowa, they had a tough loss against Hawaii. Jenna Sniffen pitched her heart out in the circle, and they just struggled offensively. So that's going to need to be adjusted coming in here to day three. But we get to see Robledo again in the circle for Mexico. She helped them get in that win column. Yeah, Jenny Robledo, terrific against the Philippines last night. A close game decided at the very end, but Robledo lights out throughout much of it. She's definitely their spark plug. Little dance move in the circle. She was such a strong force for them. She stays around the strike zone. You see 11 strikeouts on the night and only two walks, so she will throw a lot of strikes. And Mexico actually won this game on a play at the plate to close it out. Two nothing winners over the Philippines. Iowa, as we mentioned, took it on the chin against Hawaii in their first game on Wednesday night, but this is certainly a team that could turn it around in a big way. Well, for 11-1 loss, that pretty much tells the story very quiet offensively, and that's what's going to need to change if they're going to walk away with a W today. Should be a good one here as we continue on a Friday afternoon in Portland, Mexico versus Iowa. The first pitch straight ahead. Don't go anywhere. This is ESPN+. Plus. They're getting ready for softball here at Alpen Rose Stadium. We hope you are too. Latin America region champions from Mexico City, the Central region champions from Polk City, Iowa. Mexico is the away team for this one. Let's take a look at their batting order, starting off with Vasquez, Chapero, Robledo, Hernandez, Aguilar, Sosa, Olea, Gomez, and Lopez. In the circle, they will be meeting Avery Phillips for Iowa. Three-time state champ. With this squad, she's a veteran on this team. That's exactly what the what type of player you're going to be wanting in the circle, especially coming after a tough loss in day one to Hawaii. So a clean slate, a new opportunity for this team to get in the win column. Defensively for Iowa, Landy, Simmons, and Baker in the outfield from left to right. Around the horn, it's Osborne at third. Huzak at short, Mortensen at second, Cleaver at first, and Tuttle behind the dish, catching Avery Phillips. Had some rumbles of thunder and a lightning flash about an hour and 15 minutes or so ago. So that's why we're running a little bit late here. This game was supposed to start at the top of the hour, but that caused a bit of a delay in things. But we are ready to go. Mexico and Iowa, enjoy the game. First pitch from Phillips, low one outside as Vasquez shows bunt for ball one. Vasquez last night against the Philippines went 0 for 2. So that goes over for strike one. Tightly contested game last night for Mexico. It was the, the nightcap. So a fairly quick turnaround for those young ladies. They took a 2-0 lead into the bottom of the sixth inning. The Philippines had a chance, but a play at the plate ended the game. 2-1. and one. In fair territory, Phillips gobbles it up and throws over the first for the out. Soft chopper, but she's able to have that strong throw across the field to get the out. So good defense to start for Iowa. Itan Chapero is the batter for Mexico now. She went over 2 last night. Mexico sweeping through the Latin America region held in early July. Knocking off Puerto Rico 11 to 1 in the final. Liga Omeca. And Chapero's dad Igor is the manager of the team. High chopper, back to Phillips again. And the throw dropped. Cleaver couldn't put the clamps on it. And 
Joppa Rose safe at first. Seen a couple good throws, though, from Phillips, fielding her own position. That'll bring up Robledo. We saw her have a pretty nice night last night, both in the circle and the and in the circle, excuse me. Robledo two for three with an RBI and a run scored last night. That's kind of been the theme this whole week. You've got a pitcher that's really dominant in the circle, but she's also a stellar athlete at the plate. She had 11 strikeouts last night. Outside, ball one from Phillips to Robledo. Jenna Sniffen leading the way in that department. Was also two for three with two singles mm -hmm. against the Philippines. Wrapped sharply to Cleaver. Tags the bag for one. The throw a bit high. So Chopper is safe at second. But a hot shot handled by Cleaver. Two away. Third baseman number 24, Mariano Hernandez. Brings up Marion Hernandez. Hernandez one for three last night. A game that was played in drizzly, misty, light rainy conditions. Didn't feel like August at all yesterday. Feels a little better right now. Temperatures 72 degrees as we begin things here at Alpen Rose. Swing and a miss. Trickles away, but Chopper is not going anywhere. One ball and one strike. So the weather a little better from a temperature standpoint as we begin this one. But as mentioned, the rumble of thunder and a flash of lightning pushing things back here just a touch. Swing and a miss, strike two. Hernandez also had a base hit in the first inning of yesterday's game. One ball and two strikes. Tapped foul. And she's described as one of the best bats on the team. That's why you're seeing her in this four-hole spot in the lineup. Tall, strong, very aggressive hitter. Yeah, I was impressed with a lot of different facets of Mexico last night. Swing and a miss, trickles away. Tuttle trying to find it and has no play anywhere. The strikeout recorded, but the putout does not occur. Runners at the corners. Right fielder number 26, Emily Aguilar. Brings up Emily Aguilar. Coaches say that Emily is very calm. Two gun. Runners at the corners. Waits on it. It gets the called strike one. More on Emily. No balls in one strike. Stays fair, rolls to short, up with it. The throw to first. Got it. Huzak to Cleaver in time for the out. And the side is retired. Bottom of the first, Iowa the home team in this game. They're about to pick up the bats. So let's tell you about Iowa's batting order right here and now. It begins with that young lady, Madeline Simmons, followed by Huzak, Osborne, Cleaver, Landy, Mortensen, Phillips, Tuttle, and Baker. Jenny Robledo terrific in the circle yesterday for Mexico, and they're going to be counting for more of the same for her, from her again today. One of the most impressive things about Robledo is that she's not afraid to ta attack all four quadrants of the strike zone. We saw her very dominant with the curveball, but she also came up with the high strike to induce some of those swing throughs. And then, of course, the hair. You can't not <laughs> mention the incredible hair. Strong hair game by Jenny Robledo. Oh, she can pitch, too. 
Defensively for Mexico, outfield from left to right, Gomez, Sosa, Aguilar, around the horn, Hernandez, Vasquez, Chaparro, Olea at first, Lopez, who came up with a big tag to end the game last night, is behind the plate, catching Robledo. Madeline Simmons will start things off for Iowa, went one for three against Hawaii on Wednesday. Robledo deals fastball on the outside corner for strike one. Iowa dropped an 11 to 1 decision against Hawaii. That was on Wednesday. Had the off day yesterday. Well outside, one and one. So perhaps a day used to regroup, perhaps go back to the lab, refocus. And redouble their efforts going forward here in the rest of pool play. One and one. Fly ball fouled off. Doinks off the top of our camera stand. Heads up down there. <laughs> you all right? You good? All right. <laughs> <laughs> one ball and two strikes to Simmons. Robledo spinning the ball. Now she's ready for it. Well, outside again, two and two. Off speed, just low in the zone. Two balls and two strikes. Fouled off again. So far, a great at bat from Madeline Simmons. Robledo hangs around the strike zone quite a bit, so to take hacks early and often is the perfect game plan against this arm. Count full. Simmons once hit a home run that stuck in a tree beyond the fence. That's pretty cool. And I'd leave that ball there for everyone to see. Kind of send a message a bit. 3-2. I'd sign it. Outside corner. Got her. Robledo starting off strong. And pay attention to that pitch, especially against a righty. That backdoor curve on the outer half. So to a right-handed hitter, out of the hand, that's looking well out of the strike zone, well off the plate. But because of that late-breaking curve spin, it's going to break back into the strike zone. I don't remember seeing breaking balls like that at 12 and 13 years old. Hmm. That's what's so cool and so impressive about this entire tournament is these young women are so developed within the game, mature on the field, and well coached. These coaches know what they're doing, and they're instilling the game so well into these young women. Brings us to Ava Huzak. Huzak's dad, Joe, was the manager of the squad. Huzak went 0 for 3 against Hawaii. One ball, one strike. Only one hit recorded by Iowa against Hawaii, and that was by Madeline Simmons. And that came to lead off the sixth inning. Uzak was the starting pitcher that night. Went three and two thirds. Two and two. Backwards K. Got her again. Right at the knees. See, it took umpire behind the plate just a second to make that call, but I think it's the right call. Uzak not happy with this strikeout. But that's a perfectly placed curve drop right at the knees. Marin Osborne fouls it off strike one. That's what command is all about, right? Getting the pitch to do exactly what you want it to do. And the control, getting it to where you want it to go. Good combination to have, and Robledo Displaying it early on here. Not to mention you're adding the fact that Robledo's a lefty, so it's a different slot of release, a different point of reference to pick up balls and strikes. 
We saw that same element, that lefty element in Campbell Shane. Shane, the terrific pitcher for North Carolina, threw a no-hitter against Louisiana on Wednesday and pitched three more innings of no-hit ball earlier today. Pulls the string, strike three called. Backwards K's all the way around. Jenny Robledo dealing early on. Three up, three down, one in the books, and we have no score here from Alpenrose. Got her looking three times in a row. Robledo is dealing. Scoreless as we head to the top of the second inning. Team USA, we need to start thinking about the Summer Olympics next year. And, man, it is fantastic to be able to talk about softball on an Olympic level once again as it makes its return in the Tokyo Games next year. And the Pan Am Games happening right now. Team USA already off to a fantastic start. USA versus Canada in the semifinals later on today. So exciting to see our game on an international level know that that's been something that a lot of the athletes I play with have been looking forward to. I think I'm even going to make that trip to Tokyo to watch some international play. Post a lot of pictures on the gram, will you? Absolutely. I mean, that's a once-in-a-lifetime thing to be able to participate in an Olympic sport. As Carolina Sosa sends one to center. Grabbed by Simmons. That's something we're still fighting for, to make sure the sport of softball returns every Olympic game. We're fighting for that all the time. Not that I'm biased or anything, but I think <laughs> softball deserves to be in the Olympics every time. So do I. Still trying to figure out why it was left off the slate the last couple of games, but it's probably a whole different conversation as we look at Maria Jose Olea. Maria went to a national tournament and her grandmother gave her a medal. Now that medal is her lucky charm. Outside corner, called strike one. Liga Omeka from Mexico City. Swing and a miss from Aleo, strike two. Mexico City, home of the 1968 Summer Games, of course. I do know breakdancing made the cut. So, maybe I could try out for that. Maybe. I know a lot of these girls have some great dance moves. I've seen them firsthand dancing on the field. Mm -hmm. It could be kind of a, a dual athlete thing. Softball and breakdancing, I could see it. <laughs> Metal in both. <laughs> yeah. That would be outstanding. Full count. Start popping and locking your way to a oh, gold yeah. medal. Who knew? <laughs> Hit sharply to short. The long throw from Huzak too high. So Alea safe at first. The overthrow from Huzak. Maybe tried to rush it a little bit when she tried to regain control of the ball and perhaps put a bit too much on the throw. I think once that ball is bobbled, there's really not even a throw needed. The runner's already there, already safe, so it's not worth making the throw, possible errant throw, maybe giving up another base. Brings up Abril Gomez. Gomez had a nice night at the plate last night, two for three with the run driven in. This is something we had mentioned in yesterday's game, the fact that Mexico's lineup is pretty unique and that they have power sprinkled in one through nine. We've seen a few different lineups where power is kind of condensed in the upper half of the lineup or speed is condensed in the upper half of the lineup. But for Team Mexico, they truly are powerful and quick. 
one through nine, and that is versatility. That's a lot of options offensively for this group. A dream situation for managers and a nightmare situation potentially for opposing pitchers. Tuttle blocks it. Olea stays put at first. Well, and I think that even gives an, an interesting dynamic when it comes to the the player rule that everyone has to enter in this lineup. And not that someone off the bench couldn't also do the job, but when you know one through nine that you've got a lot of power and potential, how do you pick someone to sub for? How do you get other players in when you know anyone is capable in that one through nine? Swing and a miss, strike three. Gomez tries to go up and get it. Phillips has other ideas, strikeout number two. That being said, I'd imagine it's still a position that managers and coaches would very much prefer to be in. Bottom of the order is Nora Lopez. Nice pitch on the outside corner, strike one. Lopez looks up to all the great women in history. It's a long list. One ball and one strike. Also called by the coaches, the rock of the team. And boy, did she come through in a big way last night. At the very end of it all, the Philippines trying to get back into it. Bottom of the sixth inning, down 2 nothing. A pass ball went back to the screen. Lopez able to go back and get it and then scramble back to home plate to apply the tag to the runner who was trying to score. That's how that game ended. And this at bats ends with Phillips' third strikeout of the afternoon. No score as we head to the bottom of the second. Mexico fans in the building cheering on their young ladies. So far, so good for Jenny Robledo in the circle. Faced the first three batters in the bottom of the first and set them down in order. Strikeout, strikeout, strikeout. Iowa hoping for better results in the bottom of the second inning. As Mexico remains... In a scoreless game here with Iowa. The Little League Grow the Game grant initiative has distributed over $4 million to local Little League programs providing funding facility repairs and improvement and to expand or establish softball, challenger division, and urban initiative programs. For more information, visit littleleague.org slash grow the game. Caitlin Cleaver. Starting off for Iowa in the bottom of the second. Back to the screen. Strike one on Cleaver. Cleaver loves to read and also plays tenor sax. So a lot of talents for Cleaver. Nothing in two. Central Iowa Little League represented by the Central Region Champions from Polk City, Iowa, which is just outside of Des Moines. Population just over 3,400. The 0-2. Tried to frame it. Lopez doesn't get the call. One ball and two strikes. And when you're in Polk City, or at least in the area, I'm told that the hot sausage sandwich at Kippy's is the way to go. Well outside, two and two. Well, I have mentioned just a few times since I have been here about that three at-bat rule or three pitch rule that I even coach to my athletes about making adjustments. And you look back at inning one for Iowa, three at bats in a row of strikeouts looking so if there has to be an adjustment made it's got to be a big one this time against Robledo too many at bats doing the same thing over and over as Cleaver draws the walk so that's a nice move in the right direction 
But it comes down to aggressiveness with two strikes. You can't leave the decision in the umpire's hands because, as you know, Troy, the umpire is waiting for that moment to give the punch out. That's mm -hmm. the highlight of their game. So if it's anything close, they're going to go for it. Of a pinch runner coming in for Cleaver, Elise Ingebretson. We'll head to the base paths. Meanwhile, Jada Landy comes to the plate. Landy 0 for 1 against Hawaii. A huge Oklahoma Sooner fan has been to Norman to watch softball. Aaron, I understand you have too. Boomer Sooner. I've only been to Norman a few times. You know. Inga Britson heads to second. See a lot of Sooners on a lot of these questionnaires as athletes that they look up to or they idolize. It's pretty cool to see. Trickles back, one ball and one strike. Made all the more amazing because the Big 12 school in that area, of course, is Iowa State. University of Iowa also there, too. But a lot of the kids look into Norman. And rightfully so. An amazing program that they've been able to put together. One ball and one strike. Chopped foul. One and two. Iowa State, though, has been making some pretty good strides with the new head coach, Jamie Pinkerton, there. Got her. Strikeout number four. The first one swinging. It's good for the Big 12. It's good for the state of Iowa and the softball culture there. That's Although, I played the coldest game of my life in Iowa. I believe it. <laughs> It's a little chilly up that, Very uh, that chilly. part of the country. My eyelashes were frozen. It was misting. It was below freezing. But we we kept on. We powered through. We got that third game in. Here's Maggie Mortensen. Drove in a, a run. The only run for Iowa on Wednesday. Drops down the bunt here. Scramble for it. With Lado throw, not in time. And no one's covering second. Runners in scoring position. And Iowa hoping to break through and take advantage. Just a stunning bunt from Mortensen. It dies right off the bat. This is a lefty's dream. Nobody covering second base. So you move the runner over. You go ahead and get yourself on an oh, yeah, I'll take two. Nobody's there. Boy, that is an ultimate best-case scenario in that situation. And now Phillips can help her own cause. Takes the first pitch on the outside corner for strike one. I mentioned softball programs in the upper Midwest. Minnesota, of course, has made big strides over the yeah. last couple of years. I still can't believe that they had to get shipped out after that fantastic season they had a couple years ago. I was going to bring it up, but then I decided not to. But you did it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, their coach at the time is now the, the head coach at Stanford, yeah. Jessica Allister. I've, I have I asked her about it and about a year later, and she still wasn't quite <laughs> feeling it. Robledo's feeling it. That's strikeout number five. Plato settling in. That's how you respond after a big momentum shift of that bunt that turned in to a two-base appearance for Mortensen, and she comes back with the strikeout. That's the way you answer. Tuttle into right field. It drops down. Ingebrigtsen scores. Mortensen scores. A two-run single for Abby Tuttle. Gives Iowa a 2-0 lead. Well, I had said adjustments would be key after a three-strikeout first inning. Iowa showing up big time in inning two. They've got two outs on the board with two runners on, and Abby Tuttle clutch at bat opposite field for two RBI. 
Allison Baker, the bottom of the Iowa batting order, swings and misses at strike one. Critical sequence and the advantage going to Iowa. Well outside, snared by Lopez. Favorite food, mac and cheese. I would say that would be one of my three. I have a three-way tie for favorite food. Okay. Watermelon, sushi, and I mean real sushi. Not like fake sushi that doesn't have raw fish. Real <laughs> stuff. And mac and cheese. Okay. I'll take two of those three. Where, where are you out? On nah, the sushi? I'm out on watermelon. Oh. No, no thanks. You, you can. Man. That's, all for, that's more for you. I think I could kill one big watermelon in a day. <laughs> I'd kill it, but in a different sense. <laughs> yeah. To third, and the throw in time for the out. But Abby Tuttle with a critical two-out, two-run single, and Iowa leads it 2-1. Tuttle coming through in the clutch. Tuttle, top of the strike zone, but she's able to get the barrel to the ball. Two RBI. Iowa up 2 to nothing. Up there, you got to pick your teammates up. We move them around for you. We got to do it. Central All right. On three. One, two, three, central. I don't think you can go yet. Oh, yeah, <laughs> first, two nothing as we head to the start of the third inning. We're in the middle, smack in the middle of pool play. Ten teams are here. They're divided into two pools, five teams each. Everybody plays everybody in their own separate pool. And the four teams with the best records in each pool advance to the next round which is bracket play, single elimination, as the top eight teams fight it out to hoist the big banner at the very end of it and claim the championship of the Little League Softball World Series for 2019. Well, now Phillips has two runs on the board to back her up, but still a potent Mexico lineup. A lot of power, one to nine for this team. Inside, Vasquez twists away from it, three and oh. That's in there, called strike one. The young ladies who were holding up the big banner at the end of it all last year wore the central jerseys. They came from Wheelersburg, Ohio. Reaches out in the air and foul. Wheelersburg, Ohio. That squad was led by terrific pitching from Andy Joe Howard. He was fun to watch. Central beating East. Team from Tunkhannock, Pennsylvania. They meant business. They'd walk into the stadium. Someone was carrying a boom box. How about that? Wow. Phillips making some noise. Wow. Grabbing the line dry. That's one of those happy birthday catches. Look what I found. Right back to the glove. Hardly even had to move the mitt to make that catch. Chaparro swings and misses. Strike one. It's only 40 feet from the rubber to home plate, and even less than that when you take into account where the pitcher's release point is and where they actually are when the ball comes off the bat. So that distance gets covered very quickly. But Phillips able to make the play. Alpenrose Stadium located on the grounds of a dairy farm, the Alpenrose Dairy Farm here in southwest Portland, Oregon. Two and two. It's been here since the mid-90s, been held here. Since the mid-90s, the mid Alpen Rose has been here for a lot longer than that, over 100 years. Two and two. Reaches out over Cleaver's glove and in for a base hit. Team Mexico still alive. And I have no doubt 
that we're going to continue to see solid contact like this. One through nine for Team Mexico. Very strong offense for this team. And that brings up one of the strongest, Robledo, who we've seen in the circle. Drops down the punt, but goes foul. She was two for three yesterday, two singles. Two for one so far today. Robledo's uncle, Ramiro Pena, played with the Yankees, the Braves, the Padres, and the Giants, and he is still playing in the Mexican Pro League. Low and outside, one and one. I can kind of see that influence just in the way she plays the game. A little swagger, a lot of confidence. Just a pep in her step when she takes the field. Clapped past Cleaver. And on board with a base hit. Yeah, there are definitely some players that you, you can just tell. Oh, yeah. You can just tell. General Blado is one of them. <sighs> little rollover. But with enough power, able to muscle this right through the 3-4 hole for a base hit. Marian Hernandez has to duck down out of the way of that one. Ball one. Hernandez struck out in the first, but the pitch got away from Tuttle, the catcher. So Hernandez was able to reach base. Fouls that one off. Heading off towards the parking row. Almost hit my rental car there. Oh, you parked there? Oh, yeah. Why? It's not my car. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But one thing on Robledo's hit I want to mention is you can see she really muscled that as this one's behind Tuttle. She didn't get all of that pitch. And sometimes... More than just sometimes, when you swing hard and an effort really comes up big, even when mechanics fail you, you still can get away with a base hit. And that's where strength and effort plays a big role offensively. Two and two. I even say that again to my athletes that I train, is even when mechanics and everything isn't firing perfectly, because let's face it, not every swing is going to look great. But if you swing hard and you supply some force, you're going to be successful. Hernandez taps it back. Count remains at, at two and two. I think of Sniffin in that instance. Mm -hmm. I think of Robledo. Hernandez on this team. Even the cycle. Haley Peterson. Peterson. Just swinging hard. You'd be surprised how successful... You'll be at the plate if you just really supply some force. It's about that easy. Yeah, what a show that was by Louisiana's Haley Peterson yesterday morning. The 3-2 back up the middle and looking around. Goes to first. And Chase back to third. Perfectly played by Phillips. She checks the runner at third. <sighs> Just to see if she's going to take off to home. She's still in a great throwing position to make the out at first base, and everyone holds to get the out. It's really good management of base runners. Heads up thinking, knowing what you're going to do with that ball before it's hit to you. I think at times we've seen some infielders that you can see them. You can see the wheels turning as they've got the ball in their hand. They, they're just one second behind, one beat behind the play. This one's blasted. Right center field all the way to the wall. And two-run score. So just like that, we are tied up. Emily Aguilar delivering. And it's tied at two apiece. This is the power that we keep talking about. One through nine, Aguilar in the five hole for Team Mexico. Blasts a double off the wall. And two RBIs now gets us to a tie ball game. We're now at two and two. Yeah, you had a feeling that Mexico would potentially find a way to answer Iowa's two runs in the previous frame. Just had a feeling. I also have a feeling that Robledo is going to go to another place in the circle. 
She strikes me as one that doesn't want to be beaten twice. You might get me once, but you're not going to get me two times. Meanwhile, Phillips digging in, getting Sosa the chase. One ball, one strike. Oh, Mexico stranded runners at first and third in the first inning and left another runner on base in the second. But they're actually able to punch in a couple here so far on the top of the third. Two and two. Sosa's bat described by the Mexico coaches as steady with power. Two and two. On the ground, Huzak charges, throws to first in time for the out. But Mexico with a big time answer, a big time hit. Emily Aguilar ties it all up at two apiece. Solidly hit. It's the power of Team Mexico that gets us back in a tie ball game. Two to two. Got a good one brewing here in the Little League Softball World Series. Mexico and Iowa are tied at two apiece. Emily Aguilar, the two-run double to bring everything even. To the top of the order, Quinn Neerum replacing Madeline Simmons in the Iowa batting order for the moment. First pitch is on the corner for strike one from Robledo. Any major revelations from Robledo one time through the order? She's done a pretty nice job. Five strikeouts so far, only one walk, giving up two base hits. But tapping back into inning one, whatever she was feeling, whatever the focus was for her, she's got to get back to that place. And really, this game is cat and mouse. It's you making an adjustment, your opponent adjusting based on your change, and back and forth. So how is Robledo going to respond after the two-run inning that Iowa had back in the second? That's the question. Robledo started the game with three straight strikeouts all looking. There's Quinn near him. He's about to look at the 2-2 pitch. Got her. Another strikeout for Robledo. Her sixth today. Neerum goes down on strikes. There's Robledo getting back into the groove. Literally. Ava Kadelka. 0 for 1 in a pinch hit performance against Hawaii on Wednesday. Now picking up a bat and hitting in the two spot. You know, we talked a bit of tennis in the game this morning between Italy and North Carolina because a couple of the players on the Italy squad very heavily into tennis. Well, how about this? One of Ava's distant relatives is Chris Evert. Swing and a miss. I mean, that's tennis royalty right there. One of the all-time greats. Off speed up for the foul ball. That's a pitch we have not seen a ton of from Robledo. I imagine that's a pitch she works in when there's a need. But so far, she's been fairly dominant against Iowa. And there it is again, an off speed on the outer half, just out of the strike zone. It's just enough to create some deception. It's not a big speed change per se, but it's enough to trip a batter up on timing. Well, back to the power there. The challenge works for Robledo. Another strikeout. Seven strikeouts so far for Robledo. Keep in mind, just yesterday, she had 11 through six innings, and we are already at seven strikeouts. 
just under the pitch. You can see the plane of that swing just not matching up with the plane of Robledo's strike. Brings up Elise Ingebretson. Saw her as a pinch runner earlier. She's hitting in Lauren Osborne's spot in the three hole. And hits that back glove by Robledo. And thrown to first in time for the out. Three up, three down. And much like yesterday, Jenny Robledo in control. Two, Iowa two. Top of the fourth inning and about to unfold here in Portland, Oregon. A look at the standings of the Little League Softball World Series by pool. After this game, everyone will have played twice. Mexico trying to match the West region champions from Hawaii with a 2-0 record in Pool A play with a win today. Meanwhile, a couple of undefeated teams left in Pool B. The hosts from Oregon and the Southeast region champions from North Carolina. Pitches outside to Elisa Quinones, who is pinch hitting. North Carolina winners earlier today, 12-2 over Italy. Swings and misses. Count goes to one and one on Quinones. Touches her knees for good luck before games. And the coaches say that she is always giving the team good advice during games. So perhaps a future coach in the making? Who knows? Inside corner called, strike two. On a couple of hops, can't put the clamps on it, recovers, and the throw is Aaron. Quinona is safe at first. One aboard for Team Mexico. <laughs> Defense hasn't been sharp the entire time for Iowa here this afternoon. Hoping for better results going forward. To catch the excitement of the, Little of the Little League World Series softball tournaments or to find a Little League softball program in your neighborhood, visit littleleaguesoftball.org. No matter where you are, no matter which country you reside in, Little League is international. Proof positive right here in front of you, Mexico versus Iowa. Camila Olayo is pinch hitting for Abril Gomez. Olayo's favorite TV show, Stranger Things, seems to be rather popular. A lot of speed in Olayo. That's why you might have seen the bunt right there. Trying to move that runner. We are in a tie ball game, so every run counts, and we're already in the fourth inning. So offensive opportunities at a low. Seventy pitches so far for Phillips, and about to deal the one-two to Olayo. In the air, in foul ground, and it falls harmlessly. With three central players giving chase. Two more games later on today. After this one is done, Hawaii versus the Philippines, and then Oregon versus Louisiana. Back up the middle, off Phillips' glove, and has no play anywhere. So two back-to-back -back errors. And now two on and nobody out for the nine hole. And this is a critical out that Phillips is going to need to make before this lineup is turned over because we do know there's quite a bit of power and consistency in the top part of this lineup for Team Mexico. 
or the ability to maybe get a double play here, get a lead runner out. All things that this defense really needs to be thinking about before the ball is in their hand. Olea re-enters the game and heads to second base. Olea was hit for by Quinones. And Gala Marquez is going to bat in Nora Lopez's spot. Perhaps Igor Chaparro per forgot to tell the scorers that to make it official. And off we go. Gala Marquez, a big fan of Jose Altuve. If there was one big league player that many of these softball players are fans of, I would have to say that Jose Altuve was either first or second amongst all of these teams, and <laughs> rightfully so. Saw a few Russell Wilsons. Marquez, the joker of this team, a lot of humor. Tamper the second, and does get the tag. So Olayo is out at second. Looks and like runners at the corners. Going to challenge a this play. Here. It did look like a late attempt. No tag made. The ball not even in the glove when the attempt was made. The Mexico coaching staff out to have a word. Second base umpire Ed Hastings to get his perspective on things. Meanwhile, Olayo is still standing at second. She hasn't moved an inch, hasn't budged. Looks like they are going to take a look at it. Video replay here. Home plate umpire Max Cannon running the show. So Let's have another look at it. Hard from that angle, but I even noted it, noticed it just from the naked eye that the, the stab looked late. This is the great angle. You can see the ball not even in the glove. And the tag just not close. Some replay review going on in the stands as well, it seems. Everybody's checking it out. <laughs> Isn't modern technology wonderful? Crazy. By my naked eye and in real time, it also appeared that the tag had not been applied. Let's see what Max Cannon has to say. And he confirms the call. Safe at second. And give Marquez a base hit. So we, they will award the hit to Marquez. And that'll turn the lineup over. So now back into the power order of Team Mexico. A lot of consistency in this part of the lineup. Yeah, this is the, the best of all worlds, I'd imagine, for Mexico. Base is loaded, nobody out, and your leadoff batter coming to the plate. You can see the corners for Iowa pulled in. They Meanwhile, know that if anything's hit on the infield, plays at home. You've got to get that force out at home in a tie ball game, especially. Anything it takes, diving bodies, anything to keep the ball in the infield. Vasquez watches the first pitch for ball one. Nora Lopez has re-entered the game as a runner. She's at first. A look at Phillips's 
Strike count. That's hit to left, and it gets down for a base hit. One run scores, flying around, and scoring a second run. Camila Olayo comes in, and Mexico takes a 4-2 lead. Valerio Vasquez. Almost a base clearing double. She gets a hold of this on the outer half of the strike zone, right down the third base line. And it was the perfect situation for the top of this order to step up. Bases loaded, no outs. She didn't do too much with that swing. I think that's the part I liked best is she didn't overswing or, or swing too big. Just short, compact, very efficient path to the ball. Just peppers it into the outfield and gets two RBIs. Yeah, just, just very easy, very natural. Well outside, 2-0. Chapero reached on an error in the first, singled and scored in the third. Or perhaps they ruled the first inning a single as that one skips off of Cleaver's glove, causes one run to score, collision in the outfield, two more runs score. It's all going Mexico's way right now, six to two. And that'll bring up Robledo, who is the leader on this squad. This one is just peppered to the first base side. Cleaver unable to glove it. A little miscommunication on that backup. And two more runs cross the plate. So quickly we've gone from a tie ball game to now 6-2. To to too many errors. Too many girls not want the ball hit to them. Okay? Expect the ball. Want the ball. Make a play so we can go hit. All right? It's coming to your next play. Make it. Every one of you. Ready? Come on. A really good point. It's always the ones that are caught on their heels that has a ball coming straight at them. And when you're not wanting to be the one, you end up getting chosen. And I think that's what you're seeing on the infield right now. There's three errors already in this inning, all three of them in the infield. And Jenny Robledo hoping to extend the damage. Whistled. Foul. Almost made its way into the stands. Nothing in one. And when you've got a team like Mexico that has a lot of consistency and power, you can't give any free passes with walks or with errors. And in that regard, Phillips has done a good job of keeping the ball over the plate, hasn't given up a walk, but she just hasn't had that defensive support behind her here in the fourth inning. More than a few teams are singing that song, or at least they have been throughout the course of this week. Fly ball to right, and that plops down. Could roll all the way to the fence. Chapero holds up at third, and now keeps going, and she scores. Seven to two. Mexico extends its lead. Jenny Robledo coming through in a big way. None other than Robledo comes up with the blast. An RBI double right center field. And that's the power alley for a lefty. That's got to be something Phillips pays attention to is how she's throwing at these power hitters for Team Mexico. Robledo with seven strikeouts in the circle. And now with her second base hit of the day. Single to score in the third, and now an RBI double in the fourth. Still nobody out. Swing and a miss by Ana Lucia Hernandez. Batting in Marian Hernandez's place. Both of Ana Lucia's parents are architects. Bouncing on the ground, tagged, while Robledo heads down to third. All right, field number 26. And that brings up Emily Aguilar. She had the big double back in the third. Sharply up the middle and through. Robledo scores easily. 
And Aguilar with her second RBI hit of the afternoon. 8-2 Mexico. All smiles for the Latin America region champions right now. Things starting to really fire for Team Mexico. So much momentum at the plate. And that's where you're passing that energy from player to player. Pass the torch. But you got to look at how this inning started. A routine play that should have been made at second base. A routine ground ball back at Phillips in the circle that should have been made. And then things just start to kind of unravel. The missed tag going to second base. Reaches out. Plops down again. And gets past Baker for a moment. Runners at first and second. With only one out. Now we've batted around. Team Mexico... Has sent nine hitters to the plate. This one just finds the green. No man's land between Baker and Mortensen at second base. Even a little miscommunication on who's going to chase after that ball. Swing of the miss by Maria Jose Olea. As Mexico has batted around in this inning. Keep in mind... Iowa was ahead 2-0. But then Mexico with two in the third to tie it up. And so far, six in the fourth. As things are starting to slip away from Iowa and threatening to get into the same territory they were in Wednesday against Hawaii. I think the best way I can describe just the defense that I've seen from Iowa so far is you know, instead of, as this one goes behind Tuttle, instead of wanting to make an outstanding play, it looks as off as as if they are scared to make the error. Sure. A little bit more defensive on an, in an offensive sense, but you got to want to make those big plays instead of being scared that you're going to make the error. You've got to go for it. Make the diving catch. If the effort shows up, you might be surprised with what you can do. Two and two. Well outside. Iowa perhaps feeling a bit uncertain about itself right now. And without a doubt, this is an Iowa team that has the capability to do big things. I mean, they've made it here to Portland. They're on this huge stage. They have great leadership, great connection as a squad. They've just got to trust their skills. Fly ball to right. It's Baker who makes the catch. For the second out, Aguilar stays at third. This is also a team full of youngsters who have won state championships. In fact, every single player on this Iowa Watt roster has won at least two Iowa Little League state championships. And during the district and state tournaments, they outscored their opponents 95-3. to three. They also didn't lose in the regional in Kalamazoo, Michigan, winning the central region, almost going away. But the yeah, sledding tougher for them here in Portland so far. No doubt that this team knows how to play. It's just a matter of getting out of their own heads. At this point, it just looks a little bit mental. And I think Coach Mortensen said it best. Want the ball. Want the ball and make the play. Because when you don't want it, the ball finds you. Good movement on that pitch. In the outside corner, strike one. Gomez back in the lineup. As she struck out in the second. Gomez wants to make history by being a part of the first team from Mexico to win this tournament. Hasn't happened before. Gloved by Phillips. And the side is retired. But 11 batters come to the plate and they break this game wide open. Six runs across giving Mexico an 8-2 lead. Vasquez helping to lead the way with her two-run double.
Tapero in the middle, the manager of the Mexico squad. Before this tournament, very confident about how his team might perform here in Portland and also knew that he had a very good pitcher who could carry them a long way. Well, so far, both of those thoughts have come to fruition as Mexico has broken open a tight game to take an 8-2 lead to the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, as you mentioned, the goal of a lot of these young athletes is to be the first Team Mexico to win this tournament. And after seeing just through three days of play, there's a good shot that they could do it. A lot of strength on this team, both in the circle, defensively, and at the plate. And it's one through nine. It's not just one or two players. It's every single athlete on this team can come up with a hit. As this game goes along, and obviously the, the next game is still left to be played, but as of right now, Mexico's showdown with Hawaii on Sunday to close out pool play is looming larger, larger, and more interesting. I would agree. A couple of star athletes on those two teams, just from what I have seen so far through three days of play with Robledo in the circle here for Team Mexico, and then Ginny sniffing for Team Hawaii. Sniffing nine for nine, batting a thousand on the week. Pretty good numbers, I would say. Six extra base hits. Oh, by the way, through a complete game one hitter against a very good Louisiana team. Meanwhile, Cleaver puts that one into left field for a base hit. So Iowa wasting little time trying to get back into it. Robledo tries to flash the off speed, which we haven't seen much of today. But Cleaver identifies it. You can see she tries to pull the string on this pitch and golfs it off the ground almost for a base hit. Looks like my three iron. <laughs> Emma Schmidt in the game for the first time. With that, with Schmidt's entry into the game, that means everyone for the Iowa squad has had a chance to play. Outside, ball one. Schmidt, a huge fan of the Iowa State Fair, which began yesterday and runs through the 18th. Her favorite website is ESPN.com. It's a good website. Thank you, Emma. We appreciate that. One ball and one strike. The bunt straight back. One and two. The Iowa State Fair happening right now. Loves the food, loves the animals, loves the people watching. One ball, two strikes. Thinks about it. Goes upstairs, two and two. Just high out of the strike zone. We saw a lot of swing and misses on that pitch right there last night. And she sees it again, but lays off. A nice hold by Emma Schmidt. Schmidt hangs in there and draws the walk. Runners at first and second with nobody out. Catch all the excitement from all of the seven Little League World Series tournaments, including visitor information, scores, stats, video highlights, and more. Visit littleleague.org. Maggie Mortensen dropped down the bunt, went for a single, and later scored in the second inning. Well, I was going to ask you a few moments ago, now that Robledo has a sizable lead to work with, if there are any changes that she could, or adjustments that she could make in the circle at this point, or if she needs to change anything at this point well absolutely eliminate the walks she's only had two this game 
But when the leadoff gets a base hit, you definitely don't want to follow that up with a free base. So it's just those little details. When you've got a six-run lead, just attack the strike zone. Make them put the ball in play. You've got a good defense behind you. Yeah, you spent a lot of time yesterday mentioning how you had taken great interest in Mexico's infield. Their practice before the game, and you can be pretty impressed. Swing and a miss, strike three. Mortensen down. That was definitely something I noticed just pregame was watching them take infield and how impressed that I was with their athleticism. Just the way they handled the ball, the way they managed the field. Looked very mature, looked very sharp and polished. Phillips swings and misses. She struck out looking in the second inning. Phillips looks at her bat and talks to it before stepping into the batter's box. I think we just saw that right there. The 0-1. On the outside corner called, strike two. What would you say to a softball bat before you stepped into the box? Don't fail me now. <laughs> just off the handle. Please, please don't make me mess this up. <laughs> Robledo still challenging both sides of the plate. We've seen her on the curveball, late breaking, back door on the outer half, but we just saw her challenge that inner half too. I'm not sure if we're going to see the change up again because that was the pitch that Cleaver turned and burned on to lead off with a single. This is outside, two and two. Iowa trying to answer a big inning from Mexico. Got her. Another strikeout for Robledo, her ninth today. Chasing those numbers from yesterday. She had 11 strikeouts already at nine against Iowa, and we're through four innings. Most of Robledo's strikeouts have come in bunches. But that's hit back up the middle for a base hit. Cleaver coming around. Here comes the throw cut off by Robledo, and Cleaver scores. Gets away. The throw to third, handled, but safe. That'll help Iowa. It's now a five-run game. It was a nice throw from Sosa in center field. Solidly hit up the middle of the diamond. And the correct decision here is just for Robledo to eat that ball. Don't make the throw to home. The player's already crossed home plate, and she gives up an extra base. Now there's runners on second and third. So we've got another two-out RBI opportunity for Allison Baker. Baker grounded out to third in the second. Fly ball will land and doink off the top of the dugout. Heads up down there. The food's okay. She's okay, too. She held on to the burger. She looks all right. She's smiling. <laughs> as long as the burger is unharmed. <laughs> <laughs> she looks all right. That gets into center field for a base hit. Schmidt scores. On her horse. Tuttle is in. Don't look now. But Iowa's coming back. It's eight to five. All on a two out rally. Iowa clutch working that power alley up the middle of the field. And all of a sudden, some momentum generated over there in the Iowa dugout. 
as Team Mexico is going to have a word. We'll listen in. Igor Chaparro speaking to his infield, gauging the temperature of the team. Six runs for Mexico in the top half of the fourth, three so far for Iowa in the bottom half. They've still got a three-run lead. So likely him just coming out to the field to calm down the defense, calm down Robledo. Back to the top of the Iowa order, Manny Simmons has re-entered the game. The one, two, three hitters for Iowa were replaced for reserves in the third inning. And Simmons struck out in the first. But now Simmons re-enters with a runner at first. One ball, no strikes. And gloved by Olea for the third out. Iowa comes halfway back, down 8-2 at the start. Now down 8-5 at the end of four. Mexico still up by three. tomorrow i like that that sounds great no matter which language you say it in <laughs> but again tomorrow is saturday shouldn't be any school anyway right that's okay we get we get the sentiment there oh. eight five mexico with the lead and the new pitcher in the circle for iowa is ava husak husak got the start yesterday or check that wednesday went three and two thirds issued four walks or check that five walks and struck out four So Huzak coming on in the top of the fifth inning. After a big inning by Mexico in the fourth. Want to play Little League? It's easy to find your local league. Visit playlittleleague.org and enter your address to find a Little League program near you. Nora Lopez leading off for Mexico. The first batter that Huzak will face in an 8-5 ball game. Ball one to Lopez, who struck out in the second. It's so crazy to me that if the score doesn't change, that this will be the 10th game that the visiting team wins. Yeah. How about that? The road team in this tournament so far, a perfect 9-0. and oh. Mexico would love to make it in, an even 10. Lopez will be facing a 3-0 pitch from Huzak. And Lopez walks on four pitches. Lopez aboard. Seventeen, Valeria Brings up Valeria Vasquez. A two-run double in the fourth inning and later scored. One of six runs that came around in that frame. Should mention a few defensive changes with Huzak moving from shortstop to pitcher. Lauren Osborne moves from third to short. Avery Phillips moves from pitcher to third. There's Lauren Osborne at short now. Phillips now at third. Emma Schmidt staying in the game and is out in left field. A lot of changes happening. Sometimes it's hard for me to keep my defense correct on my defense card. Good thing you use pencil. I need some binoculars up here so I can see all the numbers, the jersey numbers. So I can't call you Eagle Eye Aaron? No. Mm. I got the infield pretty good, but 
<laughs> it's hard to see the outfield. Two balls and two strikes. Vasquez. May have thought about it for a brief split second. But another free ball count by Huzak. Count full. That's the good news. Fouled off. Team Mexico looking to add a few more insurance runs. I was shown a little life here recently at the plate. Payoff pitch. Fouled off. So Vasquez has to come back. She'd already motored well past first. So now she has to come back and pick up a bat and face the payoff pitch from Huzak. Chopped, but foul again. Good Phil battle. So far by Vasquez. And Vasquez has to make the long run once again. She was well past first base. <laughs> a little winded. Ball four. Back-to-back -back walks to start the fifth. Husak needing to find that zone and find it quick because Team Mexico now really in the heart of their lineup. Chaparro. Robledo on deck, Hernandez in the hole. Speaking of Chaparro, she lays down the beauty of a bunt. Use that goes to first, and everyone else moves over. Perfectly placed. That short game so important. Especially in close games, Team Mexico needing these insurance runs. She's able to lay down the short game to move over her runners. So two in scoring position for none other than Robledo, who had a screamer of a double back in the fourth, a single back in the third. So she's two for three on the day. And that's just her day at the plate. Has pitched well overall in the circle, too. We'll face the one and one from Huzak momentarily. On the ground, goes to home instead. The tag, got it. Big out. And it still is an 8-5 game. I'm a little surprised that we're not seeing the Iowa coaching staff maybe challenge this call. You can see maybe that foot, excuse me, Team Mexico challenging this call. You can see the foot gets to the plate just prior to that tag. Yeah, the tag hit the back leg, but did it get there? Now Before I think the front foot touch the plate. We're going to have that conversation to look at this play. That was a close one. I call that a bang play. It wasn't a bang bang. It sure. happened almost exactly at the same time. Mexico already with one successful challenge earlier in the game. Everybody with their phones out checking to see <laughs> what the call is. We had a lot of action at home plate, a lot of big plays. This is a nice look as well. I do think she's safe. Looks like that cleat hits home plate before the glove. 
makes contact. Boy, by the thinnest of margins, too. Max Cannon, the home plate umpire. Awaiting the final confirmation. Indisputable evidence, of course, has to overturn the call on the field. It's part of the joys of, of instant replay, which has become a big part of basically all sports. Cannon takes off the headset, and he says, run scores, 9-5, Mexico. One last look. It has to be decisive for them to overturn a call, and you can see the foot gets into home plate prior to the tag. That's a really nice angle. Now, Cleaver did hesitate a little bit with the throw from first. And perhaps that gave her just a little bit of time to come around and score. Robledo replacing the base. Let's see, she hits. She pitches. She fields. Takes part with the ground crew. <laughs> she does all the things. In contention for the Haley Peterson Award of sorts. One ball and no strikes. Swung on and foul back. I do think Robledo has some pretty amazing hair. <laughs> That's what sets her apart for me. That's the deciding factor? <laughs> One of. The, the intangibles. Look at that hair. With the ribbons braided into the braid, that's pretty impressive. How was your hair game back in your playing days? I had a visor. I was a visor girl. A uh, long pony, sometimes braid. Sometimes a bubble braid if I was really feeling on it. Okay. You probably don't even know what a bubble braid is. Not really. <laughs> I know what a power pony is. Power pony. That's a high pony. I couldn't do that with a helmet. Hernanda is now up to the plate. A lot of power in the four hole for Team Mexico here. Only one out on the board. Bounces away from Tuttle. And the run scores. And another one coming in as well. Robledo slides in. Two run score on one wild pitch. Everything going right once again for Mexico. Gets past Tuttle behind the plate. And that's really what started it all, is sliding into that throw back to home to allow another run to score. But look back at the walk, the two walks, excuse me, leading off this inning. You always can draw back kind of where this all started at the start of this inning when Husak came into the circle and let it off with two base on balls. That gets down. Marianne Hernandez's first base hit of the day. Yeah, I'm sure someone somewhere in this day and age of analytics has sat down and crunched all the numbers and done the correlation between the leadoff walk and either that runner scoring or at least some sort of score happening in that exact half inning. I'm sure that, that, that there is a very high correlation between those two events. I've heard a lot of different stats, but the one I've heard most is 85% of the time when the leadoff walks, it'll come around to score. And I'd say that's that's pretty accurate numbers just from what I've seen in playing and calling games. You walk that first hitter and all of a sudden it just ignites that offensive dugout. Three across so far in the top of the fifth for Mexico. The most damaging blow, a wild pitch that allowed two runs to score. Now 
Camila Olayo back in the game as a pinch runner at first with Emily Aguilar. Two-run double in the third, RBI single in the fourth. Trying to find the right field line, doesn't quite get there. Nothing in one. That finds the hole. Aguilar's good at math. She's good at hitting, too. That's her third base hit today. Three for four. Two singles, a double. We've been preaching this all game, but the fact that Team Mexico has the ability with that type of power, top to bottom of their lineup, one through nine, anyone Ava, can hit out. it to the green. You're pitching. Maybe you're out. Here we go. Hey, we got one out. Girls at first and second. Here we go. You're at third. Yep, get your face mask. So the pitching change in effect as Iowa trying to hang on. But Mexico trying to inflict even more damage. More on Iowa's new pitcher coming up in just a moment. Avery Phillips is back in the circle for Iowa. First batter that she faces once again in her second term is Carolina Sosa. Sosa singled in the fourth. One for three overall. Bounces and blocked by Tuttle. Runners at first and second and still just one out. And that was on a sack bunt. Two and one. Jada Landy is now at third. And Ava Kadelka is in left. Eight of the nine starting hitters for Team Mexico have had a base hit. Over half of them have had multiple base hits. Mike Sosa. Play at the plate. Not in time. Olayo comes around to score, and Mexico adds one more. 12-5. A nice base hit right up that power alley. We've seen it all day long. Up the middle of the field has been a hot spot for Team Mexico. Unable to make the play at home. Pretty much their only play for an out there. And keep in mind, with only one out on the board, the runner at home represents the run rule. Yep. Now, Iowa will have last at-bats because they are the home team. We had a run rule result earlier this morning. A 12-2 win in five innings for North Carolina over Italy. That one's cracked, but right into Osborne's glove. Chased back to second, and got her there, too. The 6-4 double play ends it, but another big inning for Mexico as they keep outpacing Iowa 12-5. Our score, a big hit for Mexico, but it ends with good defense by Iowa. 
In case you're just joining us, where you been? That's all right. We'll get you all caught up. Valeria Vasquez breaking open a 2-2 tie in the top of the fourth with a two-run double. Six runs coming across all told. Iowa mounting a mini comeback as they were down 8-2, to two, but they score three times in the bottom of the fourth inning. But then in the fifth, Mexico just kept it moving. Big wild pitch here, scores two more runs. Yeah, it's just gotten out of hand now with a 12-5 to five lead for Team Mexico. It's been their power top to bottom of their lineup that has been on display. 13 base hits for Mexico, four errors for Iowa, as defense has been hit or miss for them throughout much of this game. But that big fourth inning is the main difference as of right now, in which they sent 11 batters to the plate. Brings us to Jenny Robledo, who has done good work in the circle. Perhaps not quite as effective in some respects as her outing was last night against the Philippines, but has still been masterful in other respects. Still nine strikeouts on the day. Yep. Forty-six strikes in seventy-five pitches. Outside, two and one to Cadelka. Cadelka struck out in the third. Two and one. Tries to go for it, doesn't connect. Two and two. Sun peeking back out here in Portland, and it's starting to warm up here a little bit. Just noticed that over the last couple of minutes. The wind has died down. Barely missed on the outer half. Two walks today for Robledo. And this will not be one of them. Cadelco goes down on strikes. It's the same pitch she struck out back in the third. High and tight right at the letters. Osborne crossed up. The blade only given up two walks, but... I think if you're going to get yourself on base with base on balls and Robledo in the circle, it comes on that pitch right there. High strike that sometimes is out of the zone, but when you're biting at that high strike, she just starts to climb the ladder and challenge how far you're going to keep swinging and how high she can throw that ball. You saw it against Kadelka. We've seen it all day, really. But those two walks she had, one in the fourth, one in the second, both were because this Iowa offense was seeing those balls up and out of the zone. Got her again. Number 11 for Robledo. So she matches her strikeout numbers from yesterday. This is a curveball. Still up in the strike zone. She has some natural downspin, though. Really dances all over that zone. It's pretty impressive. Caitlin Cleaver walked and scored in the second, singled and scored in the fourth. Oh. Joe Huzak, the Iowa manager, says Caitlin is always working on her skills. which I'm sure the coaches appreciate. Fly ball to right. Aguilar lets it drop in front of her. Cleaver two for two. So the inning extended for Emma Schmidt. 
Schmidt walked and scored in the fourth. Eighty six pitches so far for Robledo. The sun back out, as we mentioned, and it is shining directly into right field. Misses outside, one ball and one strike. That's why I wore a visor. There's nothing worse than being in the outfield and having to deal with sun. It's a helpless feeling. One ball and two strikes. Perhaps Aguilar couldn't quite pick up the ball off the bat in time. One and two. Well outside again, two and two. Strike three. Robledo does it again. And that ends the inning. To the sixth inning we go. Mexico on top, 12 to 5. Three strikeouts in this inning for Robledo. And she's retired 12 by strikes. Mexico ahead by seven. the world to be here at the Little League Softball World Series. You see the mileage that the international teams have racked up. And don't forget, the Mexico City squad who won the Latin America region had to go to Puerto Rico to do it and run that gauntlet down there. Beating the main Puerto Rico squad 7-1 to in the opener. Beating the host 3 nothing. Pounding the U.S. Virgin Islands 12 to 1, and then beating Puerto Rico in the final to win 11 to 1. So this Mexico squad is battle tested, and we've I think seen the fruits of that so far in their action here, winning a close game last night, and trying to run away with this one here today. Abril Gomez starts off the sixth inning, upstairs outside from Avery Phillips who was the starting pitcher for Iowa, was lifted in the fifth, but then returned later in the fifth. As that one twists foul. One ball and one strike. Gomez looking for her first hit of the day. She's the only one in this lineup that has not registered a hit. Every single athlete on this field has at least gotten one. There's been a handful that have had two on the day. So Gomez gets her shot to jump, jump on board. Gomez 0 for 2. Was pinch hit for in the fourth inning by Camila Olayo, who singled and scored. And that's ball four. So not a base hit, but you'll be a base runner. Just as good. Here's Nora Lopez. Walked and scored her last time up. She was the leadoff walk to begin the fifth inning. We'll see if that 85% rule stands up. Yes, right here. same situation here with another leadoff walk. Snap throw. Dancing back in is Gomez. Over 110 pitches for Phillips. On the ground to second, and the throw, not in time, pulled off the bag, and both runners are safe. So instead of a potential 4-6-3 double play, it's runners at first and second with nobody out. We'll get a look. That's a good call, foot off the bag when the catch is made. Back to the top of the order. We've been praising 
the top half of Team Mexico's lineup all day. Very consistent at the plate. There's a reason these, especially the top four athletes, are at the top of this lineup, and that's because they get things going. They make some action happen offensively. Vasquez had a double back in the fourth, got herself on with a walk in the fifth. Chop arrow has put in work. Robledo has been fantastic. So top three of the Mexico order has really helped pave the way. Good movement on that pitch, three and two. Phillips starting to attack the zone. And loses her. Bases loaded and nobody out. And here it comes, Itan Chaparro. Couple of singles for Chaparro. Back to Phillips. Go home for one. And that's it. One gun. Jenny Robledo as a single in the third inning, an RBI double in the fourth, and another single in the fifth. On the ground, a funny hop and handles it and throws it over the first. Robledo retired, but another run scores. I would chalk that up as a win when it comes to Robledo at the plate, getting her to ground out just to the infield. She's had a stellar day today. Had a single in the third, a double back in the fourth. She's been blasting the ball over the field. The throw over the first in time for the out. Mexico loads the bases, but Iowa does well to get out of the jam. Just allowing one run, but now it comes down to the bottom of the sixth. Bottom of the sixth inning, and just like last night, Jenny Robledo looking to go the distance. Has struck out 12 so far this afternoon. Really strong arm in the circle for Team Mexico. I know we've said it a ton, but she's it for this team. She is the leader. She is the spark plug. She's the one that sets the tone for this club. She does it at the plate. She does it in the circle. She does it defensively. We've seen her run the base paths well. A good collection of players for Mexico overall. This is a good team, but make no mistake, Robledo takes center stage. She has established herself as one of the individual players to watch in this tournament. Maggie Mortensen starts it off in the bottom of the sixth inning. Takes the first pitch for ball one. Mortensen singled and scored in the second, struck out in the fourth. Robledo on that list with Jenna Sniffen of Hawaii. I think mean, Haley Peterson of Louisiana makes that list too based on her performance yesterday morning, hitting for the cycle and a home run, or second home run, I should say. As the count goes to two and one. Campbell Shane from North Carolina. Superb individual play. And Robledo has cracked that list to this point. Swing and a miss, strike two. Mortensen needing to battle with two strikes here. Three and two. Robledo closing in on 100 pitches on the afternoon. Two 
The 3 2. Straight up. Who's got it? It's Kepero. One gun. Battling that sun, she's able to make the catch. Here's Avery Phillips. 26, Avery Phillips. 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Swings and misses at the first pitch. Strike one. This tournament hasn't exactly gone according to plan for Iowa, at least to, to this point. Running into the Jenna Sniffin buzzsaw on Wednesday. And then taking an early 2-0 lead, but unable to hold Mexico back the rest of the way as Mexico has scored all 13 of its runs since they were down 2-0. 60 strikes thrown for Robledo, only 40 balls. Three and one to Phillips. Collecting herself. Now back in it. Third walk issued by Robledo today. I want to note, though, with that at bat. The reason you see a base on ball there is because Phillips had the discipline to lay off that high ball up and out of the zone. We've seen so many swing throughs on that pitch, and the three walks we've seen so far today for Robledo have all been because hitters have the discipline to stay off of either that high strike or when she climbs out just above that strike zone up at the eyes. That's that transition pitch for Robledo in the circle. Abby Tuttle's had a good day at the plate. She's two for two with three driven in. A couple of singles. Outside, one ball and one strike. Iowa faces the Philippines tomorrow and finishes out pool play against Pennsylvania on Sunday. Philippines to this point, they've just had buzzard luck. They can't kill anything and nothing will die. <laughs> Philippines will try to get into the win column, but they've got a tough task. They'll have to take down Hawaii to do it. That'll be our next game, game three of our quadruple header. Three and one. Ball four. Back to back walks. Very uncharacteristic from Robledo, but I got to say, we saw this last night in their close win where coming into that last half inning, you could see her almost press harder because she wanted to close the door. And in this instance, you just have to be simple. Do what you've done all game. Hammer that strike zone. Gets the call in the outside corner for strike one. Allison Baker, a two-run single in the fourth. That's in the air, backing up. Chapero reaches up and grabs out number two. That'll roll the lineup over to Madeline Simmons. <sighs> Pedals backwards, battling that sun. Has to make that leaping grab. But gets out number two. Comes down to Madeline Simmons. 0 for 2. Strike out. And a pop out. On a couple of hops to Chapero, shovel to second, safe. And a run coming home. But now at third, the ball dropped. And everybody's safe.
Phillips scores. It's 13 to 5. We'll take a look at this play. It's a nice grab for Chaparro. Oh, man. Wow. That looks like an out to me. Well, it's 13 to 6 at this exact moment. And we may potentially have the third challenge. Yes. <laughs> Igor Chaparro says, hey, hey, how you doing? Ed Hastings, second base umpire, it's me again. It looked out to me up here in the booth, and especially on that replay, the transition was clean, that field up the middle. <sighs> to me, that's an out. Ball secured, then the slide in. It does have to be definitive. They do have to confirm that that is an out. It has to be definitive and clear for them to overturn the call. Well, for the second straight day, a final out in the game involving Mexico could be decided by replay. Mexico with two challenges earlier in this game. They were both successful. Coaches only get two challenges during regulation. The call made. And it's a final. Mexico impressively beating Iowa today down to nothing no problem Mexico comes back and wins in a rout the final score Mexico 13 Iowa 5 all three facets of their game firing on all cylinders Robledo in the circle, their offense top to bottom we talked about it the entire game so much strength one through nine Every single hitter, one through nine, made their way on base. 13 runs, 13 hits, one error for Mexico. Five runs, six hits, four errors for Iowa. Mexico versus Pennsylvania tomorrow while Iowa meets the Philippines. For Aaron Miller and the rest of our ESPN Plus crew, I'm Troy Clarity. Thank you so much for joining us here. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. Once again, our final score, Mexico over Iowa, 13-5. to